I should like to tell you that I have seen some of the experiments shown in this film actually carried out at the All-Russian Physiological Congress. As you can imagine, technique is everything. Besides such work as you are about to see, Ryukhonenko shares the credit for the methods of human blood transfusion which were first developed in the Soviet Union and are now practiced in this country which have saved so many lives during the war. Hello! Hello! Right. Greetings! Hi, welcome to Condor and Crow's Petrifying Picture Show! Take ah! four? Are we on four? <laughs> I think we might be on four now. <laughs> Maybe. I'm sorry, I, I cut you off with my squawking on that. I oh, was... No, no. Uh, you got really I enthusiastic. Was... I, I appreciated yeah. your squawk. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I'm just really happy. I'm excited to do the show. Uh, it's been a little while since we've done one. It's been uh, December was the last time we did one. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We we did. Oh, uh, what did we do? S Santa Claus we, conquers the Martians. Santa yeah. Claus conquers the Martians. Oh God, yes, that movie was horrible. I've seen was, far worse was, things but since then. But oh yeah, 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 the show was fun. That movie is literally just like brain damage waiting to happen. It's like I've done something wrong in my life, so I'm going to. As penance, watch this movie. That that's that's that kind of movie. It was. Um, it's it's interesting. I think it might. I think I said that I thought that that was probably the worst movie we have, um, we've shown. Yes, uh, not definitely. as far as it's fun, but is it's yes. stupid as hell, yes. and it's very poorly ex executed. And the plot yes. is there is no plot, <laughs> it's, even, it's, but it's kind of interesting. Don't... <laughs> it's interesting but just because something's interesting that doesn't mean that it's good you know is it worth seeing yes but again only if you've done something wrong and you feel like punishing yourself right watch that exactly. Movie. exactly which i'll probably do it like once a year from now on because i know i do terrible things i'm not a good person i can admit <laughs> that it's okay it's like a cinematic flagellate self-flagellation is what it is exactly you know? exactly <laughs> So tonight we will be showing Frankenstein the movie, also known as Frankenstein's Castle of Freaks. Even though technically there's only two freaks in this movie. Is it just the uh, just the monster and then I'm assuming... No, no, the... I'm not even counting the monster. There's a uh, hunchback who's not named Igor, even though there is a character named Igor. He's not. Huh. That's and interesting. And there is a dwarf who is uh -huh. basically like a shorter version of Igor. Well, shorter version of the character who's not Igor, but should be okay. Igor because he's the hunchback. And stereotypically, the hunchback is named Igor. I mean, that's a whole shtick. Right, so yeah. I don't know why they decided to go in a different direction. Huh, interesting. Um, are they do, do they do the same thing? Are they are both henchmen, though? Uh, briefly, yes. I mean, I won't go into details because huh. it, it's... As much as this movie has a plot, that's a plot point. Yeah, you don't want to spoil. No there. spoilers. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I well, haven't seen it yet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, but this I, is going know, to be but... number four. Well, four point something as we briefly started it before this. So, watched it once yeah, straight from yeah. the Internet Archive. Second time, I bought the DVD just so I could, you know, see if there was mm -hmm. something I missed because I was assuming I missed something. So, I did that one kind of drunk. Right. Didn't help. Yeah. Time three, I did yeah. sober again just to see if I'd missed something. I don't think I did. Well, good for you, though, for giving it multiple chances. You know, I mean, I think that that's a good way to to view movies that uh, are rough, you know, a little rough around the edges. And, you know, in this this movie, you said you told me earlier it came out in the early 70s, like 73, something like that. Yep. And, you know, there's definitely a. Uh, a for a lot of movies of that time, is there's a, a roughness to them, a graininess, a grittiness. But from everything you've told me, this movie seems like a lot of grit and grain, not necessarily. Yeah, it just visually know, it definitely but, went a different direction than the Frankenstein story. So, Frankenstein. Yeah. All right, it was the year 1816, the year without a summer. 
a volcano threw a bunch of ash up in the air, everything got really cold, and some English people got into a boat and rowed out into the middle of a lake and were like, tell me a ghost story. And so they did. I and mean, that's where we got the first um, vampire story. Uh, uh, John, I can never pronounce this last name, John Piccolardi or something, the vampire. And we got yeah. Mary Shelley's Frankenstein uh, two years later. Yeah. And I you know everybody knows the story of Frankenstein. You know, Victor Frankenstein loses his mom at an early age and devotes the rest of his life to defeating death. He comes up with some sort of secret chemical, and they do call it secret chemical, to <laughs> bring life to non-living flesh. So he assembles this body out of the best the graveyard had to offer, uh, injects the chemical, and then spends the rest of the book running away from his creation. That's Frankenstein. I mean, we've all seen yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this movie is not that. <laughs> yeah, I really like the one. I mean, I've seen quite a few but i think the one that is probably closest to the original source material the original story is probably the one from the 90s with robert de niro um i mean, I mean or maybe maybe they i mean they might have taken some liberties with some things but as far as like the creature being as close to yeah, it is in the uh, story stars and the weird yeah. flesh and you could definitely tell he was an assembled being Whereas right. the rest of them, I mean, they all, they're all very Boris Karloff. It's a large, lumbering thing boxing, that goes, very boxing. oh, fire bad. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, whatever. Which I, I don't, I, I have no idea why. I mean, maybe I'll have to look into this later, but why they decided to go that direction with, you know, why, why they decided to portray the monster like that, because that carried over in almost any other media with the monster as far as being lumbered. very lumbered. There was something where monsters had to both be humans had to be capable of defeating them. That was one uh -huh. thing. And then they had to be defeated by the end of the movie. You couldn't have the monster wander off into the sunset. It had to be yeah. defeated. That's why literally in some movies, uh, there was one, uh, Frankenstein versus the, no, it was, uh, it was one of the Frankenstein movies, but anyway, it ends with him just kind of sinking into the water. Literally just, that's how he, the movie got all the way through to the end. He's perfectly fine. And then he just mm -hmm. kind of goes, it's one lake. Guess I'll die. Guess I'll yeah. die now. So it's like, because he had to based on this particular thing. So he he had rules, to be defeated. The, yeah. yeah, the monster movie rule. had to be defeated. It had to be something capable of being defeated. So they all had yeah. some kind of obvious weakness. And Frankenstein was just big and stupid. Was um, <clears throat> Now, did you always have to kill a monster even if it was like not an antagonist like if it was a i don't think that was a thing They're, they were always some sort of well, oh yeah i guess yeah i mean i guess that it probably didn't come until later monsters were usually just seen as like a thing that needed to be destroyed yeah, they had to be defeated and they had to be capable of being defeated by people if not by their yeah. own you know well i mean hell even if i think about it does <clears throat> does mighty joe young die in the old uh I'm pretty sure he does, doesn't yeah, he? Doesn't does he like die? Uh, he's either shot or a heart attack or something, just like King Kong. Fire I think. Or something. Well, I know you said yeah, he's but... a bunch of kids from like a um, burning orphanage, but I think I feel like the orphanage like falls on him or some, you know. Yeah, like he I, dies I mean, building. I haven't seen that one specifically, but I would say definitely he had to die some way. He was the monster. He martyred, they had him, he he martyred himself to yeah. save the orphans. Yeah, I think that's what happened. Um, Even though there's yeah. plenty of orphans, there's only one giant monkey. But you know what do I know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm the sort of person who has to watch, you know, Santa Claus versus the Martians every year. So you know. <laughs> the orphans should have been like, no, save your no. Like, you're a singular save, save being. Your... You're a beautiful, <clears throat> majestic beast. Leave us, save leave us yourself. Behind. Don't put the gorilla in danger. <laughs> exactly, like Harambe. <laughs> like, dude, come on, save yeah. the monkey. That kid oh, deserved it. Right. I'm sorry. You know, I'm sure he's got family and stuff, but it was a beautiful gorilla. You know, when that whole thing happened, I was like, at the time, I only had one kid, and it was my daughter, who's the more mild-mannered of the two of my kids. And I remember thinking, like, I was like, oh, what a terrible mother to let that happen. But then, because I was like, how would you not be able to get a hold of your kid and stop him? But then I had... My, we had our son and he's so crazy and wild that i'm like you know what i totally get it totally get i understand how, how the kid would have gotten yeah, yeah 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 
Uh, anyhow, uh, Frankenstein. Um, I don't know <clears throat> if if any of if you've ever seen. Have you ever seen Drunk History? Uh, which one? I know the concept. Well, you know they. It's yeah. It was, it was a show on on Comedy Central where yeah, there was the this guy who would go around to different friends of his and they would and they were all like they would all tell some sort of historical event, but they would be like drunk as hell. So like okay. there'd be a lot of like mistakes and things, and it, and then it would be acted out by actors. And it was it was really funny. But there's an episode, okay. a Halloween special, where they do like basically the origins of Frankenstein, like the story. Oh. And I don't know if you're familiar with Rich Fulcher, but he was on a show called The Mighty Boosh, and he's this very oh, yeah. he's he he played Bob Fossil, which is like the only American on oh, the show. Oh, Bob Fossil is also yeah, yeah, yeah. He, but he is so like ridiculous. And Rick Rich yeah. Fulcher in everything, even as like himself, is just so off the wall and bizarre. So his telling of the story of Frankenstein while he's just wasted is just I mean you have to look it up on YouTube or something. It's it's excellent. Um, that might be and on Will Ferrell plays the monster in that. I can Which also say? see that. So that might be on par with this. That might be how they yeah. came up with the script. Probably. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> All right. So uh, before we start this, I will throw a disclaimer out there. Uh, we Again, we are going to be showing the Internet Archive version. It is edited. Uh, the things that are edited largely consist of a bath scene and a hot tub scene, which are aesthetically worth seeing, but not really relevant to the plot. So just going to throw that out there. If you want to yeah. see those things and that's your thing, buy the DVD. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, I think that was in the, you know, in the seventies where people were a lot more chill. I think about, about, uh, you know, nudity and things like that. You don't really, there's not a whole lot of it nowadays. Every so often, you know, you might, these scenes, you know. that's the only reason they're there. They literally fill no plot position. It's only there for the right. nudity. That's it. There's so the no other reason. The suits, you know? it's yeah. like, they, they serve no purpose other than that. The director's like, we got to throw some skin in here, you know? We want to keep these keep these louses in the, you know, engaged. Yeah, it is like a third to the movie <laughs> and then like 75 percent through the movie. So you got to stick around for that. Yeah, so unfortunately we can't show we can't show that version. So, so go buy it. Yeah, so go buy so it if that's see. what you want to see. And you know, boob a boob or a butt or what? what, what have you. Uh, also, yeah, this is. I mean, it's kind of like what we talked about before when we showed um, White Zombie, and we were talking about eating yeah. alive and how, for whatever reason, uh. In the Japanese DVD of of Eaten Alive, it's the only it has the only um, it's the only version of the movie that has the full frontal nudity of Robert England, you know of of Freddy Krueger Nightmare. That's on, for, on, after that, he did a lot of Freddy thing. movies, and nobody wants to see that. Oh, no one wants like, to see a naked set on fire and like <laughs> boiled like a hot dog. Like, it would, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, it would be like when you oh. it would be like when you burn a hot dog when you cook a hot dog for too long. So, you stick it in the microwave and it just kind of explodes a little. Yeah, it's hard of it. Like, explode. Oh, yeah. oh. Like, no yeah, wonder no, Freddie pissed. <laughs> no wonder he pissed off. Good God. <laughs> you might have had a point. I don't know. Yeah. But like, again, what, what I'm trying to bring yeah. <laughs> And with that, uh, let's start this travesty. Yeah. <laughs> We gotta talk about that. <laughs> oh my god, I'm excited.
Table around and place it like the other. We must hurry now. That does it. All right. That's right. Turn it around. And cover her with the sheet. Take the coffin in the storeroom. Hurry up. Find it there. Hands, uh, move the candelabras in closer. I'm assuming that's two. That is we made the water basin. No, no, actually, that's not. Quickly, no, no, we have not yet made that. Yet. Yet move the instrument table nearer. Just a very, uh, her suit gentleman. Oh, no, no, it's a caveman. It's just not Hook. Oh, there's more than one caveman in this movie? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Holy shit. Who touched her? It was him. 
He's nothing but trouble, Count Frankenstein. You necrophile. Now, Count Frankenstein can tell a woman's been groped just <laughs> by looking out. at her. Take him out. That's how much of a scientist he is. I'm sorry. Yeah. Master, I Damn. won't do it again. I won't. I won't. I won't. What? Nope, we're taking you to the dead dwarf so pit. Never let anyone to in all here. the other dead dwarves. Yes, sir. Go and get some hot water and close those doors. See, yes, that would sir. actually make sense in this movie. They don't do that. I'm really interested. Are they at least going to explain where these cavemen are coming from? Eventually, yes. Okay, at least right as now long as they're shaving it. So how are we going to know if he's a caveman then? You can tell by the unibrow. Okay. All right. He leaves that. He shaves everything else, but he leaves that. Yeah, yeah. Back. You have to leave the unibrow intact. It's, it's, it's uh, yes, you know, culturally necessary. Otherwise, he loses nano The charge is rising. In the up to the red area. Good. Now we operate. Control the charges. That's what that guy's voice sounds like Harvey Firestein. <laughs> and it does. There's our castle, Krista. Oh. Castle of the Frankenstein. Oh, it's so lovely. Yeah, so this well, movie has a joke. make castle. a romantic setting for your wedding. Then he said he with her. It'll make me happy. I like their outfits. They're not really, uh, I don't know, they remind me of like something from a clockwork orange, you know? How does? We're just outside now, Krista. At one point in this movie, there's actually a peasant running around in blue jeans. <laughs> oh, man. That medieval thing. Huh. Yeah, just well, I guess it's not medieval time, but you know what I mean. Well, no, it just takes place in some sort of indeterminate time period in a generic oh, European, yes, yeah. you know, area. Yeah. Where they speak with vague German accents. Count Frankenstein, they're here. Except for her. Except for that woman, apparently. Yes. <laughs> Oh. Welcome, Master Aaron. Thank you, Father. Okay. Father, I want you to meet my guest, Krista Lauda, my class advisor. Welcome. When Maria said that she wanted to invite you, I pictured an advisor somewhat different. Oh. I am happy you could join us for the holidays. I feel like he sounds very more Italian. How nice to see you again. Thank you very much. I am glad you could join us. This is sort of a generic mishmash well, European so, accent. So. Oh, I can't sorry. stay. It's yeah. nothing serious. I mean, it probably would make sense because be this where this was filmed. These probably oh, yes. were Italian actors. But it's yeah. late. Have, have dinner and spend the night. And get a fresh start tomorrow. I guess you're right. It is getting late and I good. could get a good start early in the morning. Shall we go in? Ah, it's a nice to have you back. Fine, Father. <laughs> They did toss him in the dead fourth bit. No. The sound effects in this movie are just weird. Kind of odd and out of place, really. Like it sounded like oh, thunder. It gets worse. When uh Ook actually shows up. Oh, Connor. Listen for that. I've been checking the Hoffman case, and it looks like You'll we're know. ready for a trial. Yes, but but what? There's been a grave robbery. Who's grave? We'd better ask the man. Whose grave was robbed? Come on, speak up, man. Uh, it was the Kirsten Platt. Yeah. My God, she was just buried yesterday. <laughs> yes, sir. It's fair. When did you discover the body was missing? Uh, well, uh, I discovered it on this morning's round, you see. You want the carriage, sir? Yes. 
right away. Yes, and I just don't understand this kind of madness. That small footprint is an important clue. Strange. It's so small, like a child's. I wonder why there aren't any other footprints around. It's the most incredible case I've ever come across. Wax ready? Just about, sir. And make sure you get a good imprint this time. Wax is ready, Inspector. Then pour it on the footprint, Kerner. Beef makes a stealth check. <laughs> a tiny print. I love how he took his what entire body out from front of the seat to stand there just to let the audience know that he's there. And then he went back. And there's just war. <laughs> Just at the cemetery. What happened? The police were there. They found Ginza's footprint near the Gersten Platharts. That's the best news I've had all day. <laughs> Why are you so happy? Maybe they'll find out it was us that robbed the grave. <laughs> oh, no, they won't. Don't worry about that, my friend. I'm happy because my plans are taking shape. <laughs> hey. Meanwhile. Oh. That's very interesting, Tom Francis. Yes, my dear. Are we doing I find some fondue? Or... It's always interesting. I must oh, no, that's how they made uh, hot toddies. You uh, heated up a metal thing in the um, fireplace, yeah. and then you uh, dunked it into the beverage. Thank you, Ed. Delicious. Mm. Could have used a couple of those for my That this area was inhabited. Fortified beverages. Until the Great Earthquake. And that was about 500 years ago. Then the Frankensteins happened to settle here and build uh, this castle after that. Tell me, what about the sighting of this Neanderthal man? Does he exist? It's possible. You can't be serious. I always thought the Neanderthal man was, was just, just a myth. There are caves uh, around here that could be shelter for wild animals uh, or humans. But surely, Father, he'd have been seen by people from the village. No one has. No one uh, wants uh, to investigate the labyrinth of tunnels that branch out through the caves. So you see, it could be more than a rumor. Count Frankenstein, dinner is served. Good. Well, everyone, uh, shall we dine? May I, darling? Please. Thank you, Eddie. Oh, this is really lovely. I'm glad you like it. Well, I hope you enjoy our cuisine. Certainly. Count Frankenstein, wouldn't it be wonderful if science were to discover a Neanderthal man? Hands, pay attention. I'm sorry, sir. Yeah, I thought that unpleasant subject. Oh, no, Count. I don't find that unpleasant at all. I'm intrigued with the idea. Oh, yes? Father, Mother once told me about some wild creatures. There were some confirmed sightings. Responsible people said that they saw wild-looking humans living in the area of the caves. That's fascinating, Count. Yes. You're studying science. Feral people so you would be out. interested. I hope that anthropology will be my life's work. You'd be surprised, Father. Chris is studying for her doctorate and teaching classes, too. Amazing. Why do you say that, Father? Your guest here is... Uh... So beautiful, yet dedicated uh, and fascinated by unglamorous work. Aren't you forgetting, Count, that your daughter is also a beautiful student of unglamorous work? Bravo, Eric. <laughs> 
spoken like a gallant fiancé. I didn't mean to exclude my beautiful child. <laughs> Serve the dinner. Yes, sir. She's a Frankenstein, and she inherits the traditions of her ancestors, even though she's a female. I hope that you have forgiven me, but I wasn't born a boy. Oh? <laughs> yeah, you sexist asshole. <laughs> All right. That there is like the coldest damn thing I have ever heard. Very rude. I hope you forgive me for being female, father. And then he just laughs. It's like, <laughs> no. Never. Oh, oh, really? Damn. <laughs> but so far, this, uh, you know, I, I love all the, you can tell who's, who's supposed to be a villain because they all have sinister, campy voices. You know, they're just like, Yes, Christmas. Or, yes, or they're like, yes, yes Count Franken die. And they always have like like weird kind of noise falling around. Like the dwarf has a like yeah. boom, 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 boom. <laughs> weird flatulent thunder for some reason. <laughs> it's like we couldn't afford a soundtrack, so we're just gonna make weird noise with our mouth. <laughs> we flatly blowed all the money on the special effects to get the hump on his back, right? So now we just have to, you know, make <laughs> noises. And the caveman's unibrow. That unibrows ain't cheap, you know. Yeah. So, it's like a it's like a unibrow merkin that he has to he has to wear. So so far the Neanderthal plot line is these kind of the central thing separating this from other Frankenstein movies. Because it yeah. definitely doesn't come up in anything. Like anything else. I in fact I this is the only other than Encino Man and like the Flintstone <laughs> movie. I can't think of it, too many Neanderthal movies, period. Yeah. Uh, well, I, and like some of the other definitely set in the past kind of movies, but yeah, like or modern like lost, Neanderthals like a, interacting. Yeah. Or like a, like a um, lost world or like a, you know, something like some kind of situation like that where there's like a, yeah, yeah a lost continent type thing. Well, <clears throat> it's kind of strange. There, a really weird movie. Oh, what the hell is it called? Um, it has Christopher Lee in it. And it's about this, like, there's this strange, it's either, I think it's like a caveman or like, it's either a caveman or like a Yeti or something that's frozen in a block of ice. And it's on this train. And what is it called? I wish oh, I could think of it. Horror Express? Horror Express. Yeah, because I almost said Terror. I almost said Terror Express, which is an entirely different movie. Yeah, Horror Express. Oh, yes, it's on my list of terrible movies to see. Yeah, it's either a caveman or a yeti. I can't remember. Okay. It's, but it's like it, it. But it's also like maybe a vampire. I I can't. I don't know. I don't really remember. It's yeti weird. Vampire. But you have to. Yeah, I. It's it's an interesting. It's definitely original. I'll tell you that. Um, okay, so maybe that was kind of a shtick in this time period was having Neanderthal man in in yeah, your movie. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, interested more in in the in um you know cavemen and stuff anthropology well um yeah, i guess that would make sense i think a better title for this movie then would have been like frankenstein versus the caveman or something like that you know you think that that would be yeah. a better a catch here that would like intrigue people more than just frankenstein the movie because frankenstein, frankenstein the movie or frankenstein's <laughs> castle of freaks and there's yeah, two. i mean i like i like that i like frankenstein's castle of freaks as a title but um uh, you know just Frankenstein the movie like it's it's been done I mean by this point you know it's 70 1973 you know at the time of this coming out there's been multiple Frankenstein many 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 universal movies. horror movies featured yeah. Frankenstein yeah right and Boris, Boris Karloff definitely did it better yeah and then I think there were a couple of Hammer like Frankenstein oh, yeah. movies as well so you know I don't know they just I guess they weren't very inventive with that but then again you said this was didn't you say this was filmed in italy so maybe like maybe there weren't a lot of italian frankenstein movies you know maybe not definitely not ones featuring neanderthals yeah <laughs> i think this movie unfortunately locks down the count frankenstein versus neanderthal trope i mean it's, yeah, it's got it's solid nobody else yeah nobody else is going to touch that they're not going to go near it for the obvious reasons that it's terrible yeah, it's it's a 
it's a fucking weird idea. I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, I just stopped it because I wanted to address the, you know, sheer cold diss he just threw at his daughter. Yeah, yeah. What that is like the harshest thing I've seen in a lot of movies. I hope yeah, you forgive me like, for being <laughs> female, father. <laughs> no. <laughs> God damn, dude. Yeah. Oh, if anything is demanding a sequel, it would be that daughter coming back to like reanimate her father to get approval. Yes, but she should only, it should be almost like a reanimator situation where it's like just his head is, you know, it's she only, so he can't. Yeah. Love me, father. <laughs> He's fluttering all over the place. Love me. Oh my God. <laughs> okay i would see that fair enough uh, oh, yeah. Hell yeah i'm gonna, sure. I'm gonna throw that out there i would totally see that though for sure absolutely oh i would like to see them do a um like a frankenstein's monster that's made out of like multiple cavemen i think that would be interesting you know that'll be part three yeah yeah part three of course Sequel is when the daughter reanimates the father and he comes back with the bad wings. Three is when they're like, now we have to assemble the ultimate Neanderthal. We're going to take yeah. parts from like, so we're going to wipe out the remaining Neanderthals to make the best to make Neanderthal. One big, to make yes, one To make the big composite Neanderthal. ultimate, like Power Rangers version Neanderthal. <laughs> just Voltron. Just, oh, yep, just Voltron, totally Voltron all him up. He's, yeah. He's kind of wrapped in like <laughs> animal skins on his joints. Yeah, and he's got, uh, like, he's got a uh, carry like multiple clubs. He's got you know, a, so like a laser club. Yeah, laser. <laughs> I love that. I love that idea. And he fights. I don't know capitalism. We'll just why not? Yeah, he just bashes cap the capital those capitalist pigs. Yeah. <laughs> and on with the show. <laughs> on with the show. <laughs> no, no, darling. When we meet again. Shut up, you fool. <clears throat> There's no sense having trouble with hands. Your husband is busy serving Count. Don't worry. You talk too much. <clears throat> Crazy, he'll kill both of us. meat dish isn't ready you didn't have enough time but well, why do you always take it out on him he does his work i know he does you're born suspicious you never trust me i happen to know you very well i might have too well get away well, I'll finish that. That. that's not foreboding or anything no Also, I can't tell what animal that is. Looks like and it's got too many cane. legs. Pay attention or you'll yeah, be leaving. You Forever. Or maybe those are rib bones? Understand? I can't tell. Maybe it's a turducken. Maybe it's got like multiple limbs. Yes, Miss Christie. Count Frankenstein is a very interesting man. And charming. You know, he's just a sexist dickhead, though. Oh, Your milk bath is ready. Yes. I hope you enjoy it. I'm sure I will, and thank you very much. You're welcome. By the way, if I were in your place, I shouldn't take too much interest in the Frankensteins. Yeah, 
the soundtrack, you'd expect something a little more like Gallo. You know? so I'm just gonna come yeah. out with a knife. And... I'm sorry. You all right? Everything's perfect. Then I'll see you in the morning. Good night. Good night. You know, I thought it was the dwarf behind the painting, but the eyes looked a lot like hers. Yeah, they definitely look like feminine eyes. Well, I don't know, or it might have been that weird, uh, like, uh, maid or whatever who told her not to get too interested in the Frankensteins. Maybe. <laughs> oh, man. He's like, no, no, not yet, not yet. It's me, darling. What are you doing? Are you crazy? Your father... But it's not like at school. Father would kill you if he knew the truth about... about everything. I told you no. Are you afraid? No, darling. I love you. I was hoping another hand would pop out from behind the curtains <laughs> unexpectedly. That would be Okay, so it can't be her. She's busy being occupied. So maybe it is the dwarf. Also, why does it look like weird mesh whenever they're showing the other side of it instead of it just being like through the, you know, eye holes? Suspense. Whose eyes are this? Ladies' room. Don't creep around in the dark. But I... You should have frightened our guests. No, yes. master. You're right. He's really quite harmless. Don't worry. I'm sorry, Count Frankenstein. I feel so ashamed. He's like, don't worry, the In the daytime, you'll see the house before. different. It's, uh, it's beautiful. You'll see. He's not the one you have oh, to worry yes, about. I'm sure, Count Frankenstein. Good night.
Doesn't answer the question of why he's creeping around in the dark, though. <laughs> yeah, he's like, hey, beat it. This is my spot. This is where I like plenty of creeping here, so you gotta find your own place. <laughs> beat it. Uh, must be a foot guy. What are you doing here? I was only gone. Get out. Get out of your room. This castle clearly had several perv stations built into it. You know, one yeah. behind the painting and one behind a clock. <laughs> like, does Small every room thing. have its own, like, perv station? Pretty much. Yeah, I think so. Oh. This guy, clearly, you know, the castle was uh, constructed by a huge pervert. I don't think it makes sense. <laughs> This house has been in the Frankenstein name for generations. Now it looks like the end of a very long line. Well, so Maria and Eric will marry and there'll be no more Frankensteins. You see, my wife uh, died giving birth to, to a stillborn son. Perhaps, Count, you will marry again and... Um, I think I'm a little too old for that now. But you really aren't, Count, really. Perhaps the name of Frankenstein will live on. If I can contribute to science, something, they will remember me by. Is the project you are working on now such an important contribution? Yes, a very important project. A true scientific breakthrough. What is it, Count? Well, uh, I just can't talk about it at the moment. Oh, Count, I want to see your work, your laboratory. That's why I came here, to meet the renowned Count Frankenstein. Oh, no. I am flattered, but not a deserving. I've always wanted to do something important for science. Like bank Count Maybe Frankenstein? Maybe meeting you is the answer to my dreams. He's like, lady, I'm trying to tell you I'm impotent. Maybe not so much anymore. The spark of electricity is all it takes. And the dead will uh, rise. Uh, is this new? Oh, yeah. Neanderthals and then their hills. We have to do something, I tell you. Or we'll all be victims of that crazy madman. Nobody's yeah. safe around here. Not even the dead. Yeah. Yes, I tell you, we have to do something. We're people who work for me. Ask me. What's this all about? We're concerned about this grave robbery, and we think you should arrest that crazy Frankenstein. You must talk to the inspector. But we can't. Here he is now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, here he is. What's the trouble now, Colonel? Well, you see... Inspector, you must arrest Frankenstein. He's a menace to the decent people of this village. You must, you hear us? You mark my word, Inspector. There's something strange going on in that Frankenstein castle with all those strange creatures creeping around. Yes, yeah, I May I remind you that mm -hmm. the Count's altruistic nature should not be suspect. Those strange creatures, as you call them, could go nowhere without the Count's employment. But, Inspector! I advise all of you to go about your business and leave the solving of crimes to me. Inspector, uh, uh, he's always talking. You're a little rough on them. I have to keep them under control or they might turn into a dangerous mob.
There goes the prefect heading toward Count Frankenstein's castle. Did you see? Here's the guilty one. Look at all those demons of his. Grave robbing. Most dastardly crime. And it happened right here in our village. <sighs> you know what? We ought to burn that Frankenstein's place down, and all the devils in it. Okay. So. <laughs> that scene. All right. What was missing in that scene? Uh, I mean, aside from, like, believable portrayals, you know... Um, actual, you know, act, act, acting skills. Nah, yeah, yeah, but, okay, so, this movie opens with them robbing a grave and bringing a woman uh -huh. in and putting her down on the table, right? Right. Where does she go? She wasn't there. That, that's, that's a good question. She just kind of... Yeah, so, so, again, this, this makes the fourth time I've seen this. What was the point of that grave robbing scene? They're like, eh, where does the body go? What did they do with her? I mean, is that what they ate? I mean, is that the point of the movie? That could be. Well, also, I thought it was weird that earlier when they were talking about the footprints, there was only one set of footprints, which was the dwarf. Why would there only, and unless they talk oh. about this later? Yeah, that that gets addressed later. So that I'm not worried about. Okay. What okay. happens to the girl? I mean, so they the villagers yeah, making this huge did. fuss about the uh, grave robbing. Which has yeah. apparently only happened like once ever, because it's like this is the most perplexing thing I've ever seen. So clearly, it doesn't happen all the I've time. I've never heard of such a thing. Yeah, you. Were, yeah, oh, I was just saying that. How does this that, happen? That time period, you would because that was when people would, uh, you know, rob graves and sell the corpses to like you know um, universities and stuff. You know, yeah, they did that yeah, all the time. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So it's not like so it's all that up in arms it. about these freaks at the castle while going around like lurching. We should burn them all down. <laughs> Ugh. Ugh. I mean, that guy was like way creepier than like the hunchback or the dwarf. Oh yeah, we burn well, all I, the I, I maybe, down. <clears throat> maybe they called it. You know, maybe they maybe the other the other title was referring to them all being sex freaks. That could be because you know they're. I feel like there's they're all creeping around you know listening and watching these oh, yeah, you know there was that whole corridor. like back corridor of the castle with like secret entrances if you like the classic like D, &D turn the uh like candlestick and the door opens the thing the candle opera or i mean the candle holder yeah yeah yeah. Oh, yeah yeah and then like secret things by paintings and just like a complete like like how would you not see yeah. somebody behind the you know clock well it's like, dude, is there is that a yeah. guy? It's like, does anybody hear that? Dude, honey, do you hear that heavy breathing? Is there something in our clock? It's just the clock. It's just the clock. Don't pay no mind to the to the heavy breathing and and I'm moans. Making clock noises. Clock. <laughs> like, no, dude, you're beating off. We just stop. Just stop. That, that's not a clock noise. We know what a clock sounds like. <laughs> I, you know, I'm enjoying it though. I mean, it, it makes it's it's uh, it makes no sense, you know. But I like I like it so far. You know, I gotta say, it's, it's the I'm they make like a huge deal about. It's like completely hand wave. Yeah, why completely did you make a deal of that? What is it? Why does it make sense? It needs to make sense. What part of that makes sense? Work with me. <laughs> sure I was the only one going. But but why? Why did they do that? Where did she go? It's that uh, that trope. Um, what happened to the mouse? You know, it's like it's yeah. uh, <clears throat> it comes up once and then it's never mentioned again by anyone. Yeah, <laughs> so, I love it. Like, okay, like, 
it seemed like it should have been important because they devoted so much time to it and now she's gone yeah like well you know so, uh, women get, you know their corpse is getting stolen by graves or from from their graves you know it's whatever it's yeah. well we we looked into it and uh you know it, 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 we ran into a dead end All right, well, anyway, uh, we'll pick back up with the dwarf doing some shenanigans. So, onward with shenanigans. That little trickster. What's going on in here? What are you doing? It's just a... Go and sit there. Go sit in your chair, Dwarf. I have tried to help you, Gates, but you are treacherous. I'm sorry, Master, but Shut I... Shut up. Just keep quiet. I would like to explain Keep that. quiet. Was that a string of like organ meats? The sausages and bells, you know. You rang for me, sir. It wasn't even sausages. How did you like, get in here? I didn't know. Then he has learned somehow. Uh, yes, yes. What is it? I think we have another trouble with this rat. What trouble? Igor told me the inspector found Gens's footprint at the girl's grave. I thought you told me that you looked after that. You were all to be careful of leaving any evidence of your presence. I know, sir. I was careful. I thought I'd clean the area, but his footprints were so small I couldn't see them. Do you realize that all my work would be ruined by something like this? But Master Hans was Shut supposed up. to... There is only one thing to do. I can't have you endangering my work. You have to leave. But I... I, I have nowhere to go. <laughs> I can't have anybody interfere with the progress of my work. You have to leave. And take him away. Come on. Into no, the man, woods. Please. Shut up. Oh. Keep him out. I can't do this. You learn. I never wanted you. And around. another spy hole for when they tossed the dwarf. It was you, Hans. You're the double crusher. Uh -huh. You were supposed to have erased my footprint. <laughs> You're through here. <laughs> You're the dwarf hole for Come you. On, you little rabbit. You're gone. Oh. Come on. Oh. I'll be Busy. He has is hunchback a derogatory yes, term? With me. <laughs> Probably, but it's it's a trope. Yeah. I feel like with modern medicine and stuff, we pretty much don't have hunchbacks that often anymore. You know? No, it's a spinal deformity. So. Yeah. You don't deserve to live. You betrayed Dr. Frankenstein. Oh. I'm going to go to the inspector and I'm going to tell him that you robbed the grave. No, no. I made sure when we left the graveyard, your footprint was still there. <laughs> now you can't go to the inspector. <laughs> You're too involved. <laughs> I'll get you. <laughs> you mark my You're word, Hunt. Get I'll get, get my revenge on you. And I'll get my revenge on Dr. Frankenstein! Oh, Cregan, be nice. Naughty Cregan. girl, Tobold. Oh, nice. Oh. Please. Oh, Getting rough in the castle. Oh. Goliath shows no negative it. symptoms in his recuperation from this recent uh, disturbance. Oh my God, this club is No, no, perfect. listen. 
Listen. It's that squish noise. <laughs> what are you trying to accomplish with that? Is he is he that flatulent? Is that supposed to be? What is the point of it? It's that wet squish noise. <laughs> And they walk off into the distance and start a buddy comedy and this movie goes a completely different direction. The end. That would be great. I would prefer that, I think, actually. <laughs> Having seen this, I would agree. It does just sound like he's farting with every step. It does. It really, really does. It's that paleo diet, you know? But they definitely went out of the way to say Neanderthal. You got that heavy uni brow and the heavily bearded face and the like animal skins made out of what looks like, I don't know, a cow? I was say, or yeah, it looks like cowhide or something. Several small dogs? It looks like several small dogs. Like a Dalmatian. Yeah, He's dog. covered in like Dalmatian. That's, that's what I'm going with. And then, yeah, you got the club and the... I mean, he's discovered fire anyway, so... You know, yeah, well so, I mean, he's probably pretty smart for a caveman. And is that a ceiling fan stuck in the wall? It looks like a ceiling fan. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you know, this is what carbon monoxide caves is going to air it out somehow. That's yeah, a plush cave. Well done, sir. Got a sitting boulder right there for you. Here, have some crotch meat. Yeah. Does it have a metal knife? Or was it, is it like made out of he stone does. or something? No, no. It's, uh, it's very much a metal knife. <laughs> Just like he has a ceiling fan. And now a tasty beverage. Come here, my dear. 
That'll be all, Hans. You have to tell no one you came here, not even uh, Maria. I want you to see something. Be careful, George. A patient, Doctor? A special one. If he wakes up, don't make any movement. He's very unusual. And, uh, as you can see, over two meters long. He has brute strength. I had to strap him down. I've never seen anything like him. There is nothing anywhere in the world like this specimen. Come here, Kristen. Look. Here is something else that would interest you. Look how well these incisions are healing. He seems to be a healthy individual. Probably the healthiest patient I ever had. I'll explain more of his background to you later. And now I want to show you my accumulator. Accumulator? Yes. I've been working many years to harness lighting, the most powerful element in man's universe. Now behold my bubble collection. So fantastic. Who knows what we'll find a hundred years from now. So much to learn. But these experiments on humans. Certainly, after many successful attempts on various animals. But Dr. Frankenstein... I know, the ethics of the medical profession. But his family, weren't they consulted? I am his only family. I have named him uh, Goliath. But why all this secrecy? Christa, you will learn everything in due time. Where are you taking me, Maria? It's a surprise. Come on. Oh, my shoes. We're not going in that cave. Mm hmm. <laughs> Follow me. So, here we are. What strange, beautiful color. It's eerie. I have never seen a place like this so mysterious. How did you ever find it, Maria? When I was very young, I used to play in these caves, unbeknownst to father. I told you I had a surprise. I'm really surprised. It's like having your own private mineral bath. You're right. I envy you. It's like in another world. Or a planet. Now remove your jacket. All right. You'll enjoy the water. Heated from volcanic springs. With a slight odor. It may not smell so good, but it's really awfully good for your skin, as you'll soon discover. Hmm. There, that does it. Can I help you? <laughs> no thanks. He never misses an opportunity. <laughs> this dress is designed to get out of quickly. The way he runs around like diving mine stuff is like Bugs Bunny. Here I go. Is the water too deep there? This means like it's a all right. Walk, Come on walk, in. Walk, walk. Walk, 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 walk. It's so warm. I told you you'd like it. <laughs> oh, it's rather slippery here. <laughs> You'll get uh, used to it. <laughs> oh, I like it. <laughs> and yes, now the second scene, which serves no point in furthering the plot, <laughs> but is like terribly important or something. It's very invigorating. <laughs> Yeah. I'm happy you're oh, enjoying it. You no, know, it's fantastic. <laughs> Weird. <Really. laughs> Woo! Oh. Now I have another surprise for you. Turn around. Now for your first mud bath, Kristen. Oh, that's rather messy. Are you sure of this? I've done it lots of times. Don't worry, it won't hurt. Oh, I see. Organic. 
Now it's my turn. Oh, of course. My back. Wait. There you are. That's it. All right. What do we Rinse do now? Oh. Rinse it off. His face. Krista, yes. I think that your arrival has made my father very oh. intrigued. You really think? I know him. Up to now, he's been interested in nothing but scientific things. And when you arrived, became like a little boy. I know. How about you? I find him interesting. And wouldn't it be interesting if you married him and became my mother, Krista? <laughs> <laughs> Is she encouraging yeah, her to bang her dad? Uh-huh. But why? Bro. I'm enjoying it. You really shouldn't, Krista. I want to stay in. The same why father who won't congratulate her on her hard work because she's a woman. You really must believe me. Too much of this is not good for you. So come on. Oh, all right. Besides, it's getting late, and it's dangerous to be out here after dark. Frankenstein's daughter. I might have had my revenge. Revenge. Uh, uh, Take that, cool water. water. That'll teach ya. smell so bad coming out of that cave. They, I mean, they were just in a sulfur bath. You know what I mean? Oh, oh yeah. Wasn't that the inspector? They rubbed mud yes, all over themselves. There's been some trouble in the village. Sulfur infused mud. What kind mud. of trouble? Something about graves being robbed. Why should he question you? Kent's uh, footprint was found near the Gaston plot. The grave that was robbed. Gents, I don't know why you keep him around. I had him dismissed a few days ago. You'll never see him here again. I assure you. So uh, I'm going to cut it here for a very specific reason. Uh, just a trigger warning. So coming up, there is a rape scene. They don't show it, but it's very much implied that's exactly what's going on. So if that's the sort of thing that, you know, will set you off, it's there's one coming up. So just kind of skip forward a little bit slightly. Yeah, I, I'm not surprised. I kind of had a feeling something like that was, you know, going to come up. Yeah, he was a very frustrated dwarf whose friend is a Neanderthal. I mean, there's probably some real world allegory there somewhere. Yeah. But yeah, so. <laughs>
come in. So, now you understand why I had to operate on the brain. Yes. The flow of blood to the brain is stopped. And this, this person is a raving maniac if he's to continue to live. Yes. You see, my motives for the transplant of the brain were justified. I wrote all my notes uh, in here, my diary. Oh, yes. But somehow it doesn't seem to be right to fool with the laws of God. No, my dear, I disagree. Science gives privilege to a few. What do you mean? You must never stop learning. I am sure that God meant it that way. He's waking up. Uh, 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 yes. You'd better leave the laboratory. I don't know how you'd react like he's a in your presence. Six foot tall, raving maniac. It'll be fine. And remember, you are the first witness to this historical achievement. Now go. Quiet! Quiet, everyone! Here comes the inspector. Let's see what he has to say. Quiet down! What's all this about a girl disappearing? It's my daughter. It's my daughter, Jenny. She's disappeared. Jenny? What happened? She was cleaning and then went outside. Then I didn't hear her anymore. I went out to look for her and she was gone. Why, it's that crazy yeah. Frankenstein! Oh, now, all right, all right. Now, you hasty judgment. Were now, tell me, thought... Hanson. Are you sure she's disappeared and not just visiting friends? Jenny is a young girl. She'd never go anywhere without telling me, Inspector. I'm so worried. Colonel, Hans, come with me. Well, I need you. Now, show me the place you last saw her. Yes, sir. This way. Don't waste time. Erase that maniac Frankenstein. <laughs> Stab her with a knife? God. Yeah. No. <laughs> I'd probably eat her. You're going to learn, Luke. Watch me. I'm going to teach you the, the pleasures of life. <laughs> Ugh, I could do without ever hearing that line ever again. Oh. Yeah, same. Just the way Luke's eyes bulge as he looks on, that's also just cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's that weird croaking sound? It's that same farting noise. He's, he's, he's farting with interest. October 27. With arousal. Oh, that's his happy noise? More rapidly than normal. I attribute this to his great strength. And apparently that inspector just kind of goes back and forth between the castle and the village going, so Frankenstein, did you do anything perfectly? And Frankenstein just goes, no. And then he goes back to the village and he's like, yeah, Frankenstein's fine. I don't know what the problem is. Yeah, they're like, well, he said he didn't do it. I don't know. Who found it? It's like, it's like the whole... Doctor? Where Putin, 
where Trump's like, well, Putin said he didn't interfere, you know. Everything's fine. She was so young and pretty. Mm -hmm. Both of her legs are broken. Her body's almost torn apart, as if she'd been attacked by a wild animal. What are you saying? Look here, at her neck. And the broken legs. So much brutality, like a beast. I need to take her in for an autopsy. I don't want you to think that I'm crazy. But what about this Neanderthal man? Oh, come on, Kerner. Stick to facts, not rumors. Could be the work of a sex maniac. This is the worst crime I've ever seen, Doctor. We don't want the villagers to find out what's happened. If they become hey, unruly, sex we're in real trouble, Colonel. Colonel. Oh, no go to the office. Do you want me to to make the report? Of course, Colonel. Make the report. And do me a favor. Please get it right this time. All right. Didn't you something like that earlier about the wax? Like the paper. <laughs> Apparently, he just kind of half asses everything. Yeah. That's where it all began. There had been rumors of a cave man in this area. The alleged Neanderthal man? Perhaps. However, the villagers had found him out here, and I rushed to this spot. The villagers had surrounded him, and there he was, uh, fighting for his life, like a trapped animal. The brutality. I oh, know that guy. Is he wearing blue jeans or not? It looked like blue jeans for sure. It definitely looked like blue jeans. It's totally bell-bottom blue jeans. I got him! He's dead. Oh yeah, for sure. Those are jeans. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> There was no way I could and was save that one him. guy wearing a pink superstition and fear drove the movie? villagers to kill him. No, no, I'm pretty sure he was. <laughs> but, but if he was dead, that means that... I told you I was his family. With my servants, I took the wild man's body to the laboratory. The Neanderthals are like a myth in this area, right? But all the villagers know they're out there and, in fact, just killed one recently. But yeah, like, everyone is aware of their... And somehow, like, I don't know. Like, oh, no, those are just, you know, we've seen them. Yeah. Also, I think it's funny that the woman that, that he, was, he was showing her his experiments, it like, it's funny sure that she that didn't no even, one me. like... Oh put two and two together that that was like not just a normal person that was strapped to the table that it was like clearly this was the cave. moment i'd waited for <laughs> worked for my entire life was ready for the ultimate challenge the atmosphere of this area is highly verified and is it just I me or does it look like he's hooking a bunch of car batteries up to this guy's head god seemed to be my partner that day. I, totally as a vicious electrical disturbance uh, was like, raging. Like, not even, like attaching him to his ears because he doesn't have electrodes. Uh, I wish he would just, just like, like clamp him to his nipples and the then turn it off. For it was now I mean, it would be fitting with everything else that goes on in this castle. I could hear each beat of my heart like a huge drum throbbing. The suspense was exhilarating. Then... It had arrived. The moment I'd worked for. I had reached that pinnacle that every scientist strives toward. 
Are you telling me that you, that you... Yes. I brought a human being back to life. Oh. Oh. Technically not a human being. I wonder what the whole and angle is like their way of explaining why the monster's really strong. Maria. Oh, yeah, maybe. Or if they even thought of that at all. Darling. I'm not Me sure too, a lot Marie. of thought went into a lot of things. Where are the others? My father is in his study, and Krista's gone out for a walk. Did Cregan take your things to your room? Yes. Like, why does that statue oh, look like somebody's got I'm their really ass in the so fire and he's screaming about it? Because it's like, the oh, suffering castle. So I mean, it actually makes a lot of sense. They're just, you know, they, they're having a heartfelt reunion in the ass playroom. So there's another, like a set of eye holes behind the statue's eyes. I'm surprised that like all the like candle holders and stuff aren't shaped like dicks or something. And then like, you know, all the peoples are shaped like various orifices. That's further down the hall. Hello, Krishna. Thank you for coming. It's a pleasure. You know my interest in science. Just science. And banging old men. I wanted to test our giant's mental uh, capacity. He's getting along nicely, but we can't communicate uh, by language. So I thought I'd try to read his emotions. I find uh, his behavior has become more rational after your visits. Yes, my dear. He's fallen in love with you. How do you surmise that? He becomes uh, pensive for a while. Then reacts violently after you leave. Since you usually visit him at this time, I have concluded that he is expecting you. This is why it's so calm. I think it's time now to try an experiment. Whatever I do, don't think I'm mad, Krista. It appears that jealousy isn't part of his character. Now, don't be frightened, Krista. I want to test his protective instincts. That's it, that's it, look. That's it. Stay calm. Huh? All right. Calm. Calm down. I really hope I'm wrong. You are all right. Um, I don't want to give anyway any you know, plot. We have civilized his instincts by substituting his brain. Krista, I want you to assist me with further experiments. Your coming influence will be of help to me. His mental advancement will speed up. Oh, it would be a pleasure to work with you. Come, look. I want you to learn everything about my work, my formulas, uh, everything in the laboratory. Come. Here, the electric accumulator. And look, we will be able to work together. Just uh, the two of us. Yes. But I had to finish a special formula. Please, won't you sit down? Thank you, Count. Thank you. <laughs> I was wondering if you might be able to uh, help me. Perhaps you've heard something of that dwarf that used to work for you. Nothing. Since our last meeting. Why do you ask? Thank you. Well, 
In the village, a young girl, Jenny Hansen, disappeared. Or rather, abducted is more apropos. Because today, we found her body brutally mangled. And as in the case of the grave robbery, on the ground around her were footprints. I made a wax imprint. It's uh, small, like the one at the Gusten plot. Yes. The resemblance is perfect, Inspector. But there were no Think pain hands footprints? Apparently it not. could be him. Well, I mean, he was wearing However, padded shoes, and, so it wouldn't you really leave much of an imprint. Yeah, but you'd think because yes, he's, like, bigger, or he's heavier, wall. you'd think that there'd be some okay. something, you know? I was hoping perhaps one of the servants might have heard something. You're right. Better. Perhaps that's where that's the dwarf was carrying him. Indeed, Count. Thank you. I am always glad. Say that the dwarf was carrying him? <laughs> like, oh, that, that old, the, uh, I only saw two footprints down the beach. Yeah. Um, where, where were you? That, that's when the dwarf was carrying him. Hans, have you seen or heard anything from Gaines since he was dismissed? No, sir. Oh, yes, sir, but... Have any of the other servants seen or heard of him in this vicinity? No, sir. He knew the consequences if he were to come back. So, Inspector, I'm sorry I can't be of more help. It seems he's not around here. Well, thank you. Again, I'm sorry to have bothered you. However, if you hear anything, please inform me immediately. Uh, you can be sure of that. And so will you take the Inspector to the door? Good night, Count. Good night. I should have killed that dirty little rat. What was that? I I, I wanted to, I said uh I wanted to see where you were at. <laughs> that guy's voice is just too much. <laughs>
Oh, you're adorable. I'm gonna take you with me. <laughs> I was hoping it was a speed up. Like, so like out. snacked right into his throat. <laughs> Would have been fantastic. Yeah. Come on, Glass. Follow me. What's going on? <laughs> what are you doing here? <laughs> Stay calm. He's like, stay calm. I know I just threw this whole way. You need to go out. Freaking up. I was just crying. You caused enough trouble. Stay calm. Stay calm. Stay calm. Get over there! <laughs> Get back! Get back there! <laughs> Trashing the guy's lab. What caused him more damage than the caveman? Christ. Uh -huh. <laughs> Is he clubbing him with his own club? Count Frankenstein. Count Frankenstein, you must come quick. That little vermin Gens has let the monster out. Oh, no. We must find him, Hans. Get Kriegen and Igor. But Kriegen's been beaten half to death, and Igor's nowhere to be found, sir. You look in the oh. woods. Yes, sir. I'll search on horseback. What's wrong? I have to go somewhere, Maria. I want you and Krista to stay here with Eric until I get back. You understand? Krista's not here, Father. She's not back from her walk yet. Oh, my God. Is there any way I can help? Just stay here with Maria. Please no, tell us nothing. What's happening, Father. Just stay wrong? here and don't leave. Yes. It looks like a Renaissance fair turkey leg. He's recorded it's like everything. I'm assuming a goat or a lamb or something. Oh my god, he's been experimenting. Experimenting on a caveman. And by the looks of things in here, he must have just escaped. 
I'm taking you to your room. No, I want yes, to... Yes, I... I must look for your father. my life's work. I shall kill you with my own hands. You understand? Stay calm, Goliath. Stop, Goliath. You won't kill no. anyone, Frank. Wait, no. 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 Gangs! Gangs! You know what's going to happen? Oh, my God! What's that giant under cold frame? No! What? No one have a gun? My God, Count Frankenstein. giant out. Yes, and he killed Count Frankenstein and Hans. We must go to the caves and look for Christy. Yes, and you go to I the go. village and tell the inspector. Hurry! Come on, darling, let's hurry. Hi, Uke. I've got a friend. That's my friend, Uke. He teaches me wrong. He's right. But he's not mean to me. Get to like him, Goliath, once you get to know him. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Goliath. Huh. How did you get in here? Inspector. Better come out here, Inspector. 
The what doors is it? ready with the Frankenstein torches. Frankenstein monster escape. Frankenstein's monster? And daughter's fiance go cave. Frankenstein's monster? Good Lord. Kerner, come here. Go back to the castle and warn the others. I'll go on to the caves. Kerner, come on. There the going. Come on. Come on to the cage. Yeah. Let's follow the inspector. Come on, everybody. Come on, come on. Get the other right. Way. Hey, Gerda. Yeah. Bring us some of that good wine. Yeah, some wine. Good wine, yeah. There you are. We ought to do something about that Frankenstein. First it was that giant, and then the grave robbery. Then the most recent thing, so the tragedy of Jenny Hansen. <laughs> the inspector is not getting any results. I think we ought to do something. We ought to take People the law into our own hands. People are such freaks. Oh, we should petition the governor and have him get rid of our damn right. inspector. Huh. That seems to be the only way to get things done around here, I if you ask that. me. You shouldn't be accusing the inspector. He's a good man of law. You have no proof against him. Mind your own business. What kind of men are you, sitting around criticizing others? Why don't you do something about it yourself? Ah, uh, keep quiet. The monster's loose. They're heading for the caves. Where? Uh, uh, to the caves. So, get that bike. Hurry. I'd go with you if I wasn't so crippled. <laughs> <laughs> that was you that was a monster in that castle. I join you, but you know, I lost my foot in the war. What did he have to say? I can't hear because of all the other people yelling. I was like, He's like, I join you, but you know, I didn't know what he said. Oh, I'm so crippled. Oh. <laughs> lost my foot to the diabetes. I'm so sorry. Oh. I got me the bubonic plague drinking out of the water fountain in town. <laughs> We're almost out. It's all Frankenstein's fault. of a monster uh, in all of us. Especially where there's fear. The 
<laughs> and there you go. Wow. It. Yeah, wasn't that something? That that was something. That's that's for sure. Man. Uh, there you had uh, <laughs> Frankenstein's Castle of Freaks, also known <laughs> as Frankenstein's Castle, Monsters of Frankenstein, Terror, Terror Castle, The House of Freaks, The Monsters of Dr. Frankenstein. And the original title, uh, Il Castello Deo Donne Maladente, Terror, The Castle of Cursed Women. Does any of that make, this make any more sense? No. Uh, uh, you you know, know, like... Like we said earlier, like it's it's weird that they didn't mention in the title like anything about cavemen. No. The original title was First Women. Yeah. I don't know. It's it's so strange. So, okay, you get the grave robbing to set up the entire story, basically, set up the entire plot, the whole subplot with the uh getting gates kicked out of the castle, the whole thing. That body just kind of disappears. Yeah. Then you have the brain surgery on the Anderthal, which creates that giant dome thing, which the other yeah. Anderthal didn't have. Unless, no. like, under all that hair was, like, giant, like, dome. Yeah. And the surgery was supposed to make him less psychotic. Did I did I understand yeah. that right? Well, I, I couldn't tell. The, I, I don't remember if you said that it made him less psychotic or he would have to live the rest of his life as a as a psychopath i don't i don't i don't remember which one he said he was but a psychopath before the operation or after the operation i don't know both. because i mean like i, I think he both. didn't seem like a, i mean he he just defended himself from an yeah. angry mob i didn't realize he didn't realize no, he actually a saved her me. yeah yeah i mean he was he was kind of a hero and then yeah. he fell into a convenient pile other. of straw which, yeah, I mean, so cave underground filled with straw that he fell straw. into. Just you know, yeah, as as happens. Was, uh, Why yeah. wouldn't the cave have a got, giant pile of straw? Whole, they got him with the whole fire bad, you know. Yeah, Frankenstein that, that was kind of lame. I mean, they showed him use the Neanderthals using fire, so they knew what fire was. It wasn't like fire was this like mystery substance that they should all be afraid of, but right. somehow he was. And, he looked kind of, he kind of reminded me of Andre the Giant, and although not as big, but then also the other caveman, Ook, reminded me kind of of Mick Foley. So they had like a kind of a, you know, a wrestling huh. type situation, you know, an anachronistic wrestling, uh, caveman wrestling battle to the death. That could have only added to it, you know, that they came to like a, extra part of the cave where they like got to opposite sides and they just kind of charged across. Yeah. One of them suplex the other. Yeah. Him up, toss the other guy around. Choke slams him, you know. Yeah. Yeah. That would have been. The dwarf that comes been out with a chair. <laughs> <laughs> a missed opportunity really, you know. They could have only added to whatever it was that we just saw. Cause again, okay. So a month four now four. yeah. Let me see if I can put that in the camera. Do you feel or, any differently about it? No, I still have got no understanding of what this movie was trying to achieve. Other than the fact that, so the original Frankenstein, the whole concept behind it was that he was trying to defeat death, right? Yeah. This one, it just seemed like he was trying to defeat, I, I guess it was still death, but it was more to preserve his own legacy. It had nothing yeah. to do with like anyone else other than himself. He was a misogynist asshole. Yeah. He, like he, he had a daughter. His people. daughter went, had a happy fiance. They're going to go out and get married. Yeah. But the whole the problem was that once she got married, she would no longer be a Frankenstein. That yeah, which is so dumb. I, I mean, and then he, but then they introduced this love interest who's younger. So it's like, oh, maybe, you know, he can pop one off again and get, you know, knock her up and then maybe have son. a. It but has also. To be a son. But also, that was like a very, that part of the story really wasn't that relevant, like it really wasn't important to anything else that, I mean, it was mentioned once, really, once or twice, and then it was never, like, you know, it didn't really come up again. They could have even had a whole thing where 
you know, once they're um, – they could have had them stay there longer and then she could have been like oh i'm pregnant that could have been a whole thing too but you know that they didn't really and then it comes out with a giant forehead yes <laughs> that would have been that would have been great that would have been i mean that would have been excellent that, that'll that be the fourth one yes we yeah. have like the second and third one set up that'll be four second and third. yeah uh, then Amstall, baby. Like... Then, it comes yeah, out somehow... of the grave wait 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 so they get somebody else robs the grave and yeah. the Neanderthal baby comes out of the grave. Yes. Right. Stick with me here. Uh, I think we got yeah. something. Yeah. It's gold. It comes out and goes, ook. Doesn't matter, gold. Huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> ook, and it makes like squishy noises. <laughs> yeah, it's just <laughs> fart as it's walking, just farting and oinking. Fart, 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 ook. And, you know, the only thing I could think of about that, and, like, also with the very weird, some of the voice actors, very strange. Because, you know, yeah. it's obviously, like, dubbed because it was, you know, oh, well, you, did yeah. you say it was Ita- Italian? Yes. Yeah, is, it, was is Italian, that right? so it was definitely dubbed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, and that's the case with a lot of um, 70s Italian movies. It's, like, the dubbing. Like, the voices are so strange. Like, um, what, what's that uh, House by the Cemetery? With a little boy, Bob. Oh, who, with a creepy child? Yeah, the yeah, voice just doesn't match me, at all. Yeah, the voice doesn't match yeah. at all, but also it's a very unnerving child anyway, but but then yeah. he, they gave him such a weird voice. Yeah. yeah, it's, I don't know, it's just maybe, the, like, they only had so many voice actors at the time, and they all, some of them... Oh, with this one, like, it just seems like they would... had him read the lines with no context. Because, like yeah. I said, I, my, do- my daughter's gone missing. Yeah. <laughs> Dude! Really? Like he's I mean, show some like, feeling like there. Like, like, like your daughter has gone yeah. missing. My daughter's gone missing. And, and it sounded like they had the same guy who was like one of the henchmen was also the guy uh at the bar who was like, I go with you, but I you know I have type two diabetes or whatever. You know, it's like it was the same thing. Very weird, comical, like almost Harvey Firestein's sort of like, you know. Okay, Doctor Frankenstein. You know it was yeah. very weird. <laughs> I'd go with strange. you, but I I pulled my back and I got out of bed this morning, yeah. and it's kind of trapping. <laughs> but I was in here with your torch that. and your pitchfork, <laughs> and I will join you just as soon as I do something about my hemorrhoids. My, <laughs> I'll be with you in a second, honey. My my yeah, my bunions are killing me. You know, it was just very strange. I bear in spirit. I believe in you. And you can call my do mother. this. <laughs> what a wacky movie. I don't know. Would you say that it's worse, better, worse, or equal to Santa Claus Conquers the Martians? That would almost have more of a plot. I mean, I kind of understood what was going on there. It yeah. was stupid. It was really, really stupid. But I, I kind of understood it. This one just had some yeah. giant plot holes that were the plot. Yeah, there wasn't really. So it was like, just kind of. Um, plot keeps going down happened. into a hole, then it comes back out again. It doesn't yeah, stop. Yeah, it, it's just kind of like there are some events that took place and you witnessed them and that's it. And it, it doesn't really yeah. have any direction. And it's just kind of a long way to go just to just for the moral to be there's a monster inside all of us. You know what I mean? Like there are other ways to illustrate that, I think. About setting a Neanderthal on fire? Yes. Yeah, because uh, I mean I, I would like, like to think so. Because like, you know, some movies that usually have that as the moral usually have like regular people doing horrible things throughout, not just like the last five minutes of the you know what I mean? Like everybody else who was meant to be portrayed as monstrous in the movie, they do monstrous things. They either murder people or rape them, you know? So it's weird to be like, hey, we're just as bad as they are. You know what I mean? We, I mean, yes, did they kill the monster who was kind of sort I mean, he was kind of heroic a little bit. I mean, he did help that. He did help. Um, yeah, he, he rescued the woman. Know? I mean, but, things but might have happened terrible kill, after that. We didn't see it. Yeah. Right, but he did also kill uh, the one maid. He killed who, his maker to get a badass cape. 
Yeah. He takes it. I, mean, I love that was, that. It, I mean, it wasn't like, I love that part. Father! <laughs> no, it was, oh, oh, oh. let's take his clothes. Check yeah. Check. Right. Oh, but, like, I rocked this cape. Sorry, dude. Kill, he did kill the maid who was innocent. She didn't do anything, you know? So, I mean. No. But he wasn't a caveman rage. So, I mean, I can't really blame him. But, like, yeah. But it's well, kind I mean, of. They a did dress him in that stupid V neck. I mean, if I woke up yeah. wearing that, I would be pretty angry too. Yeah. Well, at first I was like trying to figure out, I was like, is that his skin or is that, is he wearing a shirt? And then no, no, I realized no, no. he was wearing I, a I, shirt. I did that too. That, that's one of the things I went back and rewatched. But no, no, it's a stupid V neck. It's a so very take weird the time to dress him, which, okay, kudos. You're trying to civilize him. You put him into a ripped V neck. A ripped looked like it was like, and you shave his of... head, but you leave the stupid mullet. Give him a, gave him a fucking like, uh, what Larry from the Three Stooges haircut, where he's bald and then has t- fucking tufts Combined of hair with on the a side. mullet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think that's too. And then you, you do know? brain surgery to give him the giant bulgy forehead. And why did it cut down all the way into his like sideburns if you're doing brain surgery? I know he had like blood. I mean, did he like, like miss and just kind of keep going? I mean, was he carving a pumpkin? It was. You know? it, it was like blood was coming down and it made him look like giuliani melting it was so weird you know it was so no, weird i don't think that was blood i think that's where they like it looked was like that incision hair? still so oh, or up here he had the blood yeah. where there yeah. was no visible blood once the bandages come off and then you had this yeah. other incision that was not bandaged again he was letting it, like he, he was, was letting it air out he was letting it breathe maybe you know? he needed to deflate his skull maybe his skull would have been even worse if he hadn't deflated it maybe well, also, I think it's weird no, no. that, like, there were these two cavemen who lived in the same area in a series of tunnels, but they didn't know each other. You know what I mean? And like, you'd think that, like, it'd be like, you know, they would be aware of each other. They live in the same territory oh, before, you know, before oh, Goliath. You came back. I missed yeah. you. Yeah, because, I, I mean, they would have, with that limited like population, that. they would have probably been related. Right, yeah, exactly. You know, but again, no. father. Very weird. <laughs> that also kind of reminds the way you said that reminded me of uh, it reminds me of dancing. It's like mother, <laughs> father, father. Can you hear me? Do you want to bang heads with me? Yeah, it was very, yeah, exactly. Very, very dancing. Do you want to bang heads with me? And then they do. Like, father, <laughs> I want your bad yeah, ass. I, I think it was father. <laughs> I think it was kind of worse than than Santa Claus conquers the Martians. Honestly, yeah, because I mean, I mean, the sets were better. I mean, the yeah, the acting well, was. Because, you know, yeah, I mean, it was on par. I think but again, I, I don't know what this movie was. Santa Claus yeah. goes to Martians. I mean, it was this the Martians kidnapping Santa Claus and trying to set up their own, you know, Santa Claus franchise. I get that. Yeah, yeah. To appease their what was this? Their emo children. Where did yeah. the woman go? Why did they do yeah. that? Why are the villagers yeah. so surprised? Why do they blame everything on Frankenstein? Why did that castle have so many perv holes? Yeah. I- yeah, I mean, it was place. like I said, it was just kind of some events unfolded, and it and honestly, it went the way a lot of my D and D games go. There's not really, you know, you have an idea, a rough idea of like what you want, like what I want to happen, or or like the the and then bits, your players the, spend the entire time going around the castle looking for purples. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, then it doesn't. Happens. Yeah, just yeah, yeah. Or making perv holes in some cases. If I make hey, an investigation a check and I find a perv hole. Yeah. Why would you do that? There's a freaking I'm dragon. Gonna, you saw it. I'm you gonna, know it's there. I'm yeah, yeah. Can that. America run investigation check to see if I can find a perv hole? <laughs> it's like, all right, just get your uh, hand out. Uh, your hand. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Uh, well, uh, well, we had. That was a thing that had, happened. Had, yes. It was a thing that happened. Yep, yep. Some uh, events took place and yeah and there was a beginning a middle and an end i don't know if i'd go that far (laughs) (laughs) there was a series of events though i I will agree with that yeah and they were unfortunate events a series of series of unfortunate events 
They were, unless you happen to be that dwarf, he got pretty good. Yeah, he. Yeah, I actually kind of hated that he like got to just live at the end and got hugged. There he was, was hugged. no competence, like none. No, not at all. Unfortunately, no. if anybody was supposed to learn a lesson, it should have been him. It did not yeah. happen. And wasn't he kind of known as being like by by everybody as being you know a lascivious like creep? You think that they would have been like burn him with the monster, you know? I mean, at the very end, they're just gonna like heave ho, toss him into yeah. the fire. Yeah, that's that. I feel like that's what should have happened. They should have tossed be like you know. And she should have done that. Do so with you. That the woman who was, you know, kidnapped, she should have tossed him into the fire as a, you know, show of female yeah, empowerment. She, that right. would pull that back. Yeah, exactly. Reclaim that shit. Exactly. Absolutely. That would have been a much better ending. Uh, and then and then the moral the monster in all of us. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. Well, uh I hope that uh that you got your fill of watching it. Um, I'm done now. That, I, I think I can officially it. stop at four times. Yes, I'm good now. Yeah. This is my first. I've hurt I, myself I, enough. I, I could live the rest of my life without ever having to see it again. <laughs> Honestly. There's a few very specific instances where that movie just like gives me the oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. So, not, so, yeah, you know, and even, even by a lot of. <clears throat> by a lot of like the standards of a lot of movies today yet yeah, are there worse worse things that yes but it's one of those situations that i think the fact that there wasn't a lot that was shown it was still just by the way that that actor played that part and like the way that he oh, did it was that just the way scene. he delivered that line yeah it was i'm just, gonna show you the like oh oh yeah oh, I really, oh, oh, yeah. And then oh. the caveman just bulging his eyes out and going, party oh, or oinking oh, or whatever oh. he was doing the whole time. Yeah, that was it was too much. Oh. It's like a less is more situation that just less is too. I mean, I don't know. I don't, uh, yeah. Thankfully, I don't know. the uh, DVD version didn't add anything to that particular scene, but it was still. Yeah. I needed to call that out because. Oh. Yeah. No, that's that was smart. That was a good idea yeah. on your part because like. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, so this might, I think this has taken the crown from, I think we were both in agreement that this has taken the crown from uh, Santa Claus Conquers the Martians as far as worst movie that we've, that we've shown yes. on here, which is really saying a lot. You know? It is because we have watched some terrible things. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so speaking of which, before we end this, uh, <laughs> the next terrible thing you'll be able to watch is not a terrible thing. Uh, we will yeah, have Night of Living Dead actually. coming up in a couple of weeks. Yeah. And uh, hopefully this will be uploaded by then. You'll be able to see it. And then you'll go, hey, I want to see more terrible things with these two people. Yeah, you, <laughs> you definitely. Absolutely. And sometimes the things that we see, I really don't think there's some of them <clears throat> that I think are pretty damn good. And yeah, like you said, um, I mean, the best thing that we've ever shown is definitely Night of the Living Dead. Um, and we, we covered it pretty thoroughly last time, but I think that there's some still still, still some stuff that we could uh educate people about but also if they don't want to be educated they could just watch a great classic movie with us you know i mean well, see, that's, and uh, that's what i would like to achieve this time is that yeah. people can actually watch it yes yes that would be great <laughs> that would be great yeah. for sure that's all because we had some, yeah it's a technical difficulty oh we killed the like talking part of it that was fine yeah. it was the was showing the movie yeah. part of showing the movie that we did not quite achieve yeah but it was our but it was our first you know it was our first time doing it and so this is our end of our, our uh one year it'll be our one year anniversary of, yeah, of having the um our petrifying condor and crow's petrifying picture show so i'm excited about it and i'm happy i think that's a milestone for us and i think that it is you know we've uh we've had a lot of fun doing this and i and i'm glad that we're continuing oh, yeah. to do it but I hope that I hope that the I hope that the two people <laughs> who who watch it with us, you know, enjoy it. Well, we actually had more people, I think, on the first one, didn't we? we? Did. Or or I mean, we're we also had... showing it later at night and whatnot. So uh yeah, at this time we'll be showing it during a uh, zombie scavenger hunt, which should be cool. Oh, nice. 
yeah, yeah. I like that. I didn't. I actually didn't realize that. That's excellent. That's oh, a yeah. great. So uh, the uh, use services librarians are doing a scavenger hunt, and in the meeting room, I'll be showing the movie. Yes, that's excellent. That's a great tie-in. That's a great idea. So anyway, we're gonna wrap this thing up. Uh, but before we do, you need to say a thing. Oh yeah, I'm supposed to say a thing. Um, we're totally gonna have to say a thing. Yeah. You know, there's something that there's a you know you you can take you can try and squeeze a moral out of anything, and you know I think that a lot of it is in the eye of the beholder. Uh, in this case, you know there are a lot of um, peeping eyes, a lot of sex holes, um, and so you know I say you should always look first before you insert anything into a sex hole because you don't know what's on the other side. You know, take that metaphorically or literally, um, you know, I think that's, those are words to live by. I think that that's something that everybody can apply that to their lives in some way, you know, also check for nails. And we will, you don't get snagged. We will also. leave it with that. And uh, <laughs> we'll see you next time, folks. Check your sex holes. <laughs> Check your sex holes. Good night. Check your sex. Good night, everyone.